scenario, watching that very successful computer company, Digital Equipment Corporation, collapse in the early 90s. Now, the reason why digital's demise was such a puzzle is that through the 1970s and through most of the 80s, digital equipment was probably the most widely admired of all the companies in the world economy. And when you read explanations about why this company was so successful, always the success was attributed to the quality and capability of the management team. And then about 1988, digital equipment just fell off the cliff and began to unravel very quickly. And when you then read explanations in the business press about why the company stumbled so badly, always it was attributed to the ineptitude of the management team. And it was the very same people running the company on both sides of that hill. Well, for a while, I framed the question as, gosh, I wonder how good managers could get that stupid that fast. And that really is the common explanation that most people give and accept for digital's demise as well as most companies that stumble. And that is that somehow a management team that had its act together at one point found itself out of its league at another. But the reason why the dumb management hypothesis just didn't feel right for me is that every mini computer company in the world collapsed in unison. It wasn't just digital but Data General, Prime, Wang, Nixdorf, Hewlett-Packard. And you'd expect these guys to collude on price occasionally, but to collude to collapse was a stretch. And there just had to be a more fundamental reason why the whole population of computer companies were killed in unison. And this model was quite helpful. So I just ask you to go back, and these kinds of computers don't exist anymore, so you have to go back in your memory to recall that digital's products were called mini computers because they were a lot smaller than mainframes that filled a whole room. But these mini computers were still as big as a filing cabinet. Very complicated and expensive. They cost about $250,000 to buy. And the selling process involved a lot of training, support, and service. In order to play in the mini computer game, you just had to have those kinds of costs in your company. Given those kinds of economics, digital had to generate about 45% gross profit margins on computers that sold for a quarter million dollars in order to make money, and that was their economic model. During the 1980s in their company, as in every company, people were coming into senior management all of the time with ideas for new products that they should invest in. Some of the ideas entailed making better mini computers than digital had ever made before. In fact, these would be so good that digital could reach up into the tiers of the market where historically people had had to buy even more expensive mainframe computers. If you look at those business plans, they promise gross margins of 60%, and you could earn that percentage on computers that sold for a half million dollars. Now, while management was deciding whether they should go up in that direction, other people were coming to management saying, no, you guys, you don't get it. The future is with the personal computer. Just look out the window. They're everywhere. Well, management could look out the window, and indeed they could see these PCs everywhere. But they also saw a couple of other things. First, do you remember how crummy those early personal computers were? In fact, Apple sold the Apple II as a toy to children. And that meant the more carefully digital listened to its customers and tried to reflect the customer's unmet needs in the properties of their next products, they got no signal from their customers that the PC mattered because, in fact, it didn't to them. And then when they looked at the business plans, it got a lot worse because in the very best of years, they promised gross margins of, of 40%. They were headed to 20% quickly. And they could only earn those paltry percentages on computers that sold for 2000 bucks. So really, the choice that management had to make as the PC was emerging was, I wonder if we should make better products that we could sell for better profits to our best customers. Or alternatively, maybe we ought to produce worse products that none of our customers would buy that would ruin our profit margins. What should we do? And it really is a dilemma. Um, 